delegates and participants present over here. My name is Aditya Sarin. I am the session host for this session. Currently, I am working as a EUA center coordinator, which is a startup center funded by Bayrek. And Atmia is really helping us to motivate the young entrepreneurs. Welcome to the pivotal session of our conference, where we find ourselves exploring into the critical discourse surrounding sustainability and the multifaceted challenges confronting the global south. This segment holds the promises of stimulating journey through three concise sessions. The first session will be an invited talk by our esteemed guest. Second session will be on fireside chat. And the third most awaited session of the evening is business idea pitching by the selected startups. We are honored to have our esteemed experts Dr. Satyabhushan Dash, Ms. Sara Vazza, Dr. Harish Bhatt, and Dr. Ashish Kothari on the dais, and Dr. Vartika Chaturvedi and Dr. Anastasia Kirtsi of the dais. Today, their insights will undoubtedly enlighten our discussion and pave the way for a more sustainable future. Without a further delay, let me move to the first session and invite Dr. Ashish Kothari, sir, to formally introduce our esteemed guest and to take over the first session. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, as Aditya, sir, mentioned, uh, this is the uh, first session and this is the special session uh, arranged in this second international conference. And uh, we start with the first expert of today's session, uh, that is Dr. Uh, Satyabhushan Das, sir. He is a professor of marketing uh, at IIM Lucknow. He leads uh, the Ishwar Dayal chairperson for the futuristic issue in the behavioral science uh, at the same place. He is the founder chairman of Center for Marketing and Emerging uh, Economics. Uh, he is a recipient of Professor Manubai M. Shah Memorial Award for his excellence commerce and business management. His research area covers a diverse uh, range of topics uh, from online to B2B marketing, tourism, healthcare marketing and recently he has started uh, his work uh, uh, focusing on the consumer behavior after COVID-19 lockdown situation. So we have a great personality with us. I request now uh, Dr. Satya Bhushan Das, sir, to take over the session. Sir. Hello. Good afternoon. I think after the launch, the session is very, uh, people are a little edgy. Okay. So good afternoon to all of you and uh, thank you for inviting me for this uh, important session. And uh, actually in our, I am Lucknow, we have a, a postgraduate program in sustainable management. And uh, I think uh, after Terry and other things, uh, this is the first time that has floated this program. And uh, I have been teaching last, uh, although I am a professor in marketing, I have been teaching this sustainable marketing course. So when I have got uh, this invitation, I was thinking that certain university also thinking, we were thinking that we are doing, but other universities are doing this uh, sustainable uh, con conference and everything. So this is a uh, really pleasure to come over here and to speak to all of you chair speakers and uh, the delegates. So basically today I will be focusing the sustainable innovation is a very important area. If you know this uh, sustainability innovation, how that will be taken place in any organization. And I will be also uh, speaking how the sustainability course should be taught in universities and colleges. Nowadays there is an integrative learning system that has been very critical and most of the people are adapting, I'll be discussing on that thing. 
So uh, this environmental sustainability and innovate, innovating for environmental sustainability, you know that a lot of uh, summits are going on. Today we are doing one summit uh, and uh, several other places. The summit is happening and we have see, seen that G20 witnessed the sustainability goal, UNESCO sustainability goal. There is a lot of uh, uh, buzzword on these things, but uh, one person, Professor Rajan Badrajan has done, is Indian, has done sus substantial work is towards sustainability innovation, public policy and so global social innovation. So uh, I have uh, just uh, borrowed some of the slides Professor Badrajan was doing. This is what, uh, this pollution uh, that uh, Kong Ning wears a wedding dress decorated in 1999 face for her performance artwork Marry the Blue Sky as she poses for photograph in front of China Central Television Headquarters. Uh, so many, uh, you, you see that this is the crowded, all of us we know all these things, that in every day this kind of crowd situation and also there is a hectic, uh, whenever you go in road and everything, we know all these things. This is called a black swan or black elephant, a serious problem, everybody know around us, but what kind of, what is the solution? So uh, he has given uh, most widely cited definition meeting the needs of the present without compromise the ability of future generation. Uh, this waste emission rates should not exceed this thing. Harvest rates for renewable resources should not exceed this. All these things are there in the books and concepts. Stay within the biophysical carrying capacity of planet. Economy imperative provide an adequate material standard of living. Social imperative provide systems of governance that propagate the values that propel. So marketing is a dis discipline where I am a professor in marketing. Responsible for job creation, our success in demand creation results in job creation. Most of the companies who are doing unsustainable innovations, they are telling we are giving a lot of employments. And India is soon have the fifth of the world's working age population. So that's why they are doing some lot of, lot of unsustainable products. You see what is the employment exchange, how, what is the crowd. The challenge of sustainable development is the reconciled social developmental goals economically directed at improving quality of life. So how that can be possible? Demarketing, basically. This carbon uh, emission intensity, how will reduce? How will reduce uh, this? Uh, uh, so many, nowadays, this uh, hybrid cars are shown in different uh, uh, exhibition and uh, important shows. That shows that uh, people are using this thing and they are esteemed uh, by Several people are respecting to them. There are three things Professor Ajahn Bhadrajan has suggested in this phenomenal article. He has got uh, three, four years ago American Marketing Association Award. Conception elimination, conception reduction, and conception redirection. These three important aspects, if you can look at it, you can do a lot of things. Think about conception elimination. What, how you can eliminate conception? Unsustainable products, completely elimination. For example, we are using water bottles. If uninterpreted water can be supplied <laughs> at unusual places, people are using water bottle because water is not available, like water ATM and everything. So that can be completely eliminated. And if the water supplied by government will be uh, very clean, people will not use these water filters because. When we are using water filters, several people are telling this is black. This is also, uh, that, that is the filter is not working, you are in problem. So I think government has an important responsibility that they should provide pure drinking water. If that can be possible, this can be completely. Similarly, consumption reduction. For example, nowadays we are using public vehicles. Sorry, private vehicles. Public, uh, in there is a metro was that in uh, Delhi, so many people have taken interest in metro, but what was the problem? Again, that has reduced, people still using private vehicles. So India being, being a collectivist society, people always wanted to travel in groups because they like that thing, like your Mumbai and everything. But why people do not travel? 
in public because the public transport is not reliable. That is one explanation. What we can do that public transportation will be better so that people will not use so many private vehicles, there will be not so much use. All these things is in our hand. Citizen participation and government policy, both, both should be taken place. Third and most consumption redirection, if you look at, as I have told, so many unsustainable products we are doing from every day, morning to night, and they say somebody was telling Mitty Cool uh, refrigerator that is a substitute of uh, current refrigerator that will not take any electricity and everything. And we can uh, preserve uh, food and food, 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 food products and other products there. So this kind of innovation, similarly, inverter, this uh, water supply, uh, sorry, electricity supply is not there. People are using a lot of inverters, the, this uh, transmission and everything. At, uh, big, big transformers, uh, but if the electric supply will be uninterpreted, uh, then that will not be required. So think about in that line, what can be sustainable, they say people, when we are talking about green consumption, organic products, then we are taking cl clothing also equalable, why people are not using? That is a very critical question. Adoption and uses, several people have adapted, but they do not continue. So when we are talking about sustainable uh, products, we are doing a lot of research projects our students have done. Most of the time people, they have a want to use sustainable products, but they really do not do when they compare sustainability versus, versus performance. Most of the sustainable products, they are campaigned on the basis of that has a uh, green, uh, that greenness is there, that is good for the society, environment, the environment. But never we think about my environment. How they say we are using non-organic products, how that will be harmful to me. That is a very critical thing. And uh, I was telling some of my experience, I have time. I can speak another five. I was telling my experience several times People do green uh, practice, but they do not communicate. For example, one of my students, he was doing PhD, and uh, he was telling that I will do something on green marketing. So I have told that these green hotels are there. What is the purpose of green hotel? I have done some literature study that this much, they have reduced this much carbon emission, water, all these things. So then I have gone to a Lila hotel. This mic is working. So I should not be difficult to <laughs> carry this. So I have gone to Lila Hotel, that is three, five, six year, years ago, and I have met the manager at 11 o'clock in the night. I was very much excited. I am going to a green hotel. That is a motivation, green consumption, natural light, all these things, because I am from village. So I will, I will go to village. They say, today I have heard here that this university is doing gosala and uh, uh, green farming. I have told that you please show me because I always go back to this uh, thing. So uh, I have told this person that, uh, can you please explain me why, how this hotel is green? Well, uh, this is nothing, no green green, all these things, useless. You, this is a, just a normal hotel. Why you think that this can be a green hotel? Then you go to forest. This is not like this. I have given 5,000 rupees more, incremental price. So then I was, uh, is it not audible? Yeah. So I was surprised, I was shocked. So I have told, they have cheated me. I will file case and this is nonsense. I was so much disturbed. And this uh, manager told me, you are mad. You, you are a mad person, you just, uh, he told that you are a mad person, you are a useless person, you should not live in this country, you should get out and all these things. I have told, what is the nonsense? You have charged this much money, you are, so, then I will. Uh, I have called. Uh, I will. I have told that I will call my student. He is a SPR, and he will arrest you. So then he called the general manager of that hotel. He came at the night at 12 o'clock. I have told this person is telling this is not a green hotel. You are telling the green hotel. No, no, no. This is a green hotel. How you explain me that my general manager took one hour time to explain me 
what is the greenness in that particular hotel. He has given, taken me that room, that big windows, all these green connections are there. And I, uh, uh, I could have shown you the slide, but it will take a lot of time. The internal features we have taken, this ambience, design, and how the foods uh, are served, all the organic foods. The external ambience, he has told, that is a fountain. The music is there, there is no uh, uh, other like a tape recorder or something like that, this uh, audio, all these things. Fountain, the music is very good, cool and everything. So all these things he has explained. I have told that you videograph all these things and send me. So I have told my student, now you do research on this how green hotels, because of this greenness service encounter, green service encounter, Bekora has done a study in way back that uh, design, ambience, and aesthetics, and uh, uh, internal and uh, external ambience, and social, how this uh, uh, behavior of the employees instill confidence and greenness, which the manager was lacking. So uh, he has taken all these things, he has taken an audit. I have told for, for no hotel that I have requested, personal I have gone that you give, this is a very good thing, greenness you are doing. I see a lot of articles in Western, but in India is not there. So they have allowed, and this my student was staying in different hotels, and uh, <clears throat> he had done the study. He will be surprised to know, I, I can, uh, we have published two A-star papers. Because of this green service encounter, this green experience, experiential value, there are four important components. Economic value, that value for money, and another is social value. People are going to green hotel, they put that in different Facebook and everything. This is called social value. Altruism value, how people are uh, conscious about the environment and everything. So, uh, and pleasure. People are getting a very good, you say, I always uh, get the pleasure, natural less, and you all of you, that is within us. So, this value increases because of the service encounter. 75% of customers want to come back to that green hotel because of this greenness. So, this is the USP of a green. Several times people have no confidence what they have done. They think that people do not give value. So they do not do any study. We have sent this report to the general manager. He was very happy. He told you come and stay in our hotel for another 30 days. I am very much happy that you have done this study. So what I am going to tell, so this green experience, consumption elimination, consumption reduction, and consumption redirection, in every aspect, we can do certain things. We may not do complete elimination, but we should try our best to do direction and uh, reduction. Uh, so he has given also very good model how that can be possible. I cannot so so many things inverter as I have told consumption elimination and uh, this uh, consumption elimination be achieved and uh, uh, very good paper. I will send you. You can read the paper. Uh, another important thing I was talking here. I because all of you are coming all the way. This is a big model. Money, that means he is telling how this abnormal demand become high upon sustainable products. Plastic based products, more demand is happening. And because of that, adverse effect cover. And because of that adverse effect, uh, this uh, demand elimination, uh, demand reduction, how this environmental sustainability outcomes can be possible. At one stage, we are using this unsustainable products, we encourage, at the same time, one versus do, we tell that we want to do sustainable practice. Both the things cannot be taken place. This university is an example for other universities because they are doing this uh, milk production and all these things here inside this. So this packaging and everything at least elimination over. So many people are doing this uh, uh, milk packaging. We are doing a study, uh, one of our students has done dairy milk from the uh, of, uh, Commodity, this has become brand. Parag, Amul, people tell differentiation. This is, Parag is better than Amul. When the cow milk is available, and that is Sudh cow milk. So what is that, this packaging, plastic, all these wastes? So that doesn't make any sense. So last, I will tell, uh, I will go to the end because I, I know that time is short. Uh, I was telling something about... Uh,
रोल ऑफ ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इन लर्निंग एंड एजुकेशन फॉर सस्टेनेबिलिटी दर इज ए कम्प्लीटली ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ऑफ दिस सिलेबस शुड बी डन फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई एम गिविंग एग्जाम्पल मिस मर्सिडेज बेंस हैज इनोवेटेड ए कार हुई चैज फिफ्टी परसेंट थर्माल एफिशिएंसी मोस्ट ऑफ द कार्स ट्वेंटी टू थर्टी परसेंट थर्माल एफिशिएंसी इज ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कंसेप्ट समर हैज टू अंडरस्टैंड द कार हायर द थर्माल एफिशिएंसी लेसर द पेट्रोल विल बी कंज्यूम अब फॉर मोर माइलेज विल बी देयर सो ए स्टूडेंट इन मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग सिलेबस ही शुड बी टॉट दैट व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट एस्पेक्ट्स हुए दर इज ए पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ सस्टेनेबिलिटी इनोवेशन फॉर एग्जांपल हायर थर्माल एफिशिएंसी 80 परसेंट थर्माल एफिशिएंसी द ऑटोमोबाइल्स कैन अचीव बट ऑल दीज एस्पेक्ट्स आर नॉट टॉट प्रॉपरली दैट्स वाई पीपुल डू नॉट हैव दैट बेंट ऑफ माइंड ऑफ सस्टेनेबिलिटी इनोवेशन सो कम्प्लीटली ट्रांसफॉर्म ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन नेचुरल क्रिटिकल लर्निंग एनवायरमेंट टू बी क्रिएटेड टू प्रेजेंट स्टूडेंट विद एक्सपीरियंसेस दैट भावलेट दैट एग्जिस्टिंग पैराडाइम एज ए फर्स्ट स्टेप टुवर्ड्स कंस्ट्रेटिंग ए न्यू मेंटल इमेज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड एंड दिस इज मोस्ट क्रिटिकल यू हैव टू ट्रांसफॉर्म द स्टूडेंट्स लर्निंग व्हाट वी डू एंड प्रैक्टिस दैट इज एफसर्ट रियलिटी इज दैट सस्टेनेबिलिटी एंड दैट कैन बी डॉन बोथ स्टूडेंट्स एंड टीचर्स इन्वॉल्वमेंट इंटीग्रेटिव लर्निंग ट्रांसफॉर्मेशनल लर्निंग where teachers should be also given some training how you can give that in the students mind that sir. is very critical sir. last last line shift shift from teaching to learning this learning is very critical teachers also do collaborative learning from the students what are the problems they are facing when they are practicing so that co creation of sustainable practice can be taken place and many education despite their commitment they do not do this thing and fundamental shift from learning how to understand to learning how to act and transform last slide the importance of teacher training is helping unpack their experience and believe and previous experience how that is absurd that students should a teacher should so university has a very important role changing role of lecture to co creator and student will be interested to be out of their comfort zone who is results doubt and confusion several times students do not ask questions but you give them experiential learning they do also those things practice in their own life and tell what are the problems sustainable living this is for example here you are here you are doing gardening also in, inside the university so you will tell that what is the problem you are facing thank you very much giving me ample amount of time and to speak and sorry for delay yeah thank you sir so basically in in his talk uh, sir has uh, mainly focused on the transformative education in the university uh, so that uh, the transformation from teaching to learning and more towards the sustainable part that is being inculcated so that uh, everyone can uh, uh, take benefit of the sustainability for the future generation also thank you sir for your talk now uh, i would invite another speaker for the session uh, she is miss sara verger uh, she is having the background uh, in the psychology and e economics she is driven by the passion for scientific research and sustain sustainability her doctoral research focuses on sustainable production and consumption she is committed to devising solutions for the sustainable and equitable future and hence it demonstrates the dedication of her for addressing the critical issues for global sustainability i request ma'am for uh, her talk madam this <coughs> thank you all right so good afternoon also from my side uh, welcome to my talk thank you for the introduction Um, I'm focusing my research on a department of work and organizational psychology on um, decent work conditions and the promotion of living wages. And today I would like to provide some insights into the research of work and organizational psychology uh, regarding decent work and living wages, emphasizing the benefits. Since I'm in India today, I want to use India as an example for the challenges that persist worldwide. 
Um, what is special about India is that it has experienced tremendous economic growth over the past 20 years. Um, between the years of 2000 and 2022, the GDP per capita rose by almost 450%. That is quite a substantial and impressive number of created value. But if you take a look at how this generated wealth is distributed across the population, a less pleasant picture emerges, one of rising income inequality. Hard to reliably measure income inequality, but it's estimated that around 55% of Indian wealth is owned by the top 1% of the population, and up to 80% uh, are owned by the top 10% of the population. From all the newly generated wealth in a year, it is estimated that up to 70% go to the, to the top 1%, and only 3% of wealth go to the bottom 50% of the population. This means that it would take a worker on a countryside in India uh, 941 years to match the earnings that the leading Indian garment company um, top paid executive would earn in just one year. For sustainable development, it is important that the whole population can profit. A reduction in working poverty can bolster sustainable economic growth by increasing the purchasing power and productivity of the population. Additionally, reduced income inequality contributes to enhanced productivity, uh, sorry, contributes to enhanced social stability and reduced crime rates. Countries reaching for sustainable economic growth should be looking to eliminate working poverty, as nobody working full-time hours should live in severe poverty. And this is where living wages play an important role. A living wage is a wage that not only allows employees to satisfy their, both, uh, their most basic human needs, but also enables them to meaningfully participate in life and society, and builds the capacity to build savings for future unforeseen events. And by all that, a living wage uh, improves the quality of life and work life of the individual. But why are living wages such a powerful instrument in the fight against uh, working poverty and for more decent work? Living wages are an integral part of decent work. From a psychological perspective, we can think of subjective experience of decent work in five dimensions. As we can see in this model, living wages belong to the reproductive material dimension. Then there's also a social communicative dimension, a legal institutional dimension, the dimension of status and recognition, and a meaningful subject-related dimension. While the concepts in the dimensions 2, 4, and 5 are rather abstract psychological consequences describing emotional responses to the work environment, dimensions 1 and 3 describe more concrete aspects of decent work. And the subjective experience of these concrete aspects of decent work can also have a facilitating effect on important emotional experiences, as in the dimensions 2, 4, and 5. When an individual perceives their wage to be a living wage, as in the definition we just saw before, this may also be linked to important emotional experiences and have a positive impact on the other dimensions. Another concept that allows us to consider the importance of living wages is the one of the poverty trap, or from a more humanistic perspective, the capability trap. According to Sen, human capability is defined as the real freedom that people have to achieve the kind of lives that they have a reason to value. The capability trap theory explores the link between employee pay and human thriving. It emphasizes the idea that income below the level of a living wage does not only create a financial poverty gap, but a behavioral poverty trap, because individuals lack the capability to leave the poverty zone. With a capability trap, people are stuck just as in a poverty trap in a state where their physical and mental resources are constrained because they are worrying about how to cover their most basic needs. As a result, these individuals often find themselves in a condition where their human capabilities stagnate or even shrink over time, instead of growing over time and experience. Current colleagues have suggested here that uh, this S-shaped relationship between income and capabilities that they could also replicate in various studies and which seem to be more pronounced in countries with higher income disparities. Behavioral poverty traps have also been studied. For example, economic hardship can cause psychological stress that has a negative effect on decision-making or goal direction. 
In this context, wages below a living wage threshold may not be sufficient in promoting sustainable development of human capability. Only if the wage lies above a living wage threshold, the individual can build up the capabilities to thrive and live a decent life that will in the future be helpful in creating even higher income and higher capability. This threshold can therefore be seen as a transition from surviving to thriving and the optimal level for living wage. In the last part of my presentation, I want to give a short overview of the consequences of living wages for the individual, for the organization, and society as a whole. I think the consequences for the individual should be quite clear by now. <clears throat> the living wage gives um, individuals the ability to meaningfully participate in society and enjoy their life. And this is especially true for workers who suffered from working poverty before. For individuals, the most basic consequence of a living wage is that the employee can afford a reasonable living. Um, then there are psychological consequences that are the benefits of psychological empowerment, such as the feeling of being valued, higher self-esteem and higher self-efficacy, higher social status and identity. On the side of well-being, living wages can reduce stress, depression and anxiety while promoting mental and physical health. And finally, there are work-related outcomes that include higher motivation, organizational citizenship behavior, moral efforts, engagement, and higher job satisfaction. And all, these influence, uh, all these aspects influence the quality of life of the individual. Now we have some consequences for the organization that are rather profit-oriented. Um, ultimately, when considering all these consequences, living wages can improve the uh, organization's product quality. Regarding employees, paying a living wage may lead to higher loyalty and less turnover, less training and overtime expenses, and more socially integrated employees with less sick days and absenteeism and higher productivity. For the leadership of the organization, living wages relate to a culture of dignity and respect that will be crucial in building positive corporate legacy and heritage. And they also foster a good work climate that also encourages managers and supervisors to work more productively. And then we have some implications for marketing, where CSR practices can be used to distance the organization from competitors and attract investors and other stakeholders. Especially the consumers might be an important group of stakeholders, valuing the compliance with ethical principles and in some cases even paying higher prices for ethically sourced products. This brings us to the consequences for society as a whole, where I just want to say for this whole society, consequences of paying employees a living wage can be noticed for any one of the UN sustainable development, sustainable development goals. The most prominent goals that living wages contribute most to achieving are goals 1, no poverty, goal 12, sustainable production and consumption, and of course goal 8, decent work and sustainable economic growth, for the achievement of which living wages are almost a prerequisite. Now I have one more minute. Um, so I would like to summarize this again. Living wages matter because they are an important part of decent work conditions that allows other characteristics of decent work to develop. They allow individuals to satisfy all basic human needs for themselves and their family while providing a sufficient foundation for meaningful participation in life and society and allowing for savings for unforeseen future events. They form the basis for a stepping stone out of poverty to evolve from merely surviving to thriving. By allowing, by allow, by allowing individuals to develop human capability, they give the freedom of choice. And finally, they have important consequences for the individual worker, the organization and society as a whole that can have great impact on the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. So in, in, in her presentation, she, uh, she uh, worked on the living wages, which commonly uh, shares as I uh, share that in Atmiya University we share the universal human value and it talks, talks about uh, the same concept uh, in a different manner, harmonize with self to the family and for society as well as nature in detail. So thank you, thank you very much madam. The third uh, distinguished speaker of this session is Dr. 
Harish Bhatt before his retirement. Dr. Harish Bhatt was has served as a scientist in a renowned space application center ISRO at various positions like chairman and mission director in information and cyber security board. I request sir for his presentation sir. Good afternoon to most of us and good morning to all Rajkotians. <laughs> Because Rajkot public has a habit of taking nap after lunch and hence I requested sir to keep my talk last so that I hope that everybody is awake. <laughs> and he uh, kindly granted that. Uh, sir has talked about many things about the waste says how green environment should be maintained and everything for sust sustainability. Madam has talked about psychological impact in on the area of the sustain, sustainability. Now we all are using the internet and social media. Without internet and social media will create a big impact, psychological impact on everybody. Many people become hyper also and see uh, maybe knowing more than me about that. I will not talk much on that. Even electronic garbage is becoming a big threat of the for the sustainability and the green environment. I will not touch upon that also because that is not my field. My field is the information and cyber security and that is going to play a very important role in the sustainability. Now we all are using internet and uh, social media. Now that gives a lot of advantage to us but it gives big threats. We all are aware that cyber crime, financial frauds, they are increasing day by day. The identity threats are also increasing day by day. Once upon a time, biometric authentication was considered as one of the best authentication system. But now with the emerging AI, it has become the big threat. The reason is that our biometric information is available to everyone. It is available with Samsung, it is available with Nokia, it is available with MI, it is available with Google, it is available with WhatsApp, it is available with the Facebook, it is available with the Zoom, it is available with the Skype. You name it and they have your face, they have your audio, they have the, your fingerprints, many things are available to them. So uh, uh, making the, doing the biometric authentication is not a big job for anybody uh, having a knowledge about the AI. Now you may ask that uh, how many of us knows about AI? Okay, that for the criminal that is not a big threat because so many things are available as a service. Same way, cyber crime as a service is available. So if anybody is interested to do any cyber crime, he did not have to learn any technology. He can directly go to the dark web, search for the cyber crime service and use it. And the hackers are there who will do their job. And they are uh, experts in using all the latest technology. And uh, they have all latest technology available at their hand because we have to purchase the technology. They have to simply hack the technology. The latest innovation and everything is at their fingertips because they can easily hack while we cannot hack. So for us, having an AI in our hand really makes a financial impact so that everybody will not be able to use the AI. So this sort of scenario is going to increase in multifold because the usage is also increased exponentially. Technology innovation is also increasing exponentially. So the threats, they are all go together. Now one gentleman told me that Harish, I am at risk. I am not at all at risk. The reason is I do not have anything on my smartphone. I don't use Facebook. I don't use WhatsApp. I don't do 
online banking, I don't do mobile banking and many things he said about that. So I said, sir, you are using smartphone. Now in smartphone, you are using Android. Once you are using Android, the Google account is created. And are you aware what is the password of the Google account? If not, it means that it is installed by the shopkeeper and he has installed the default which is known to everybody. So the person will go to internet, use your mobile number, authenticate it on the Google Play service and install the application what he wants on your mobile and it will be installed on your mobile without your knowledge and your mobile will be hacked. So he said, how does it make any difference to me? Let it be hacked. Okay, fine. It doesn't make any difference to you. Fine. But now if this mobile is used to attack on any organization, financial attack on organization and the cyber police investigate and find out that the attack was from your mobile, you will be behind the bars. And then your lawyer will have to put a lot of efforts in proving that the, you had implemented adequate security on your mobile. Now, Pawan Dugal is a uh, cyber uh, uh, lawyer in Supreme Court. He said once to me, I asked him what is the definition of adequacy in the cyber uh, security. He said, if you hire me as a, your lawyer, I will prove that whatever you have implemented is adequate. And if your opponent has hired me, then I will prove that whatever you have implemented is in inadequate. <laughs> it is such a vague thing. Correct? So adequacy has no meaning in that part. So one and all, everybody has to really a, be very secure on that part. Otherwise, it is difficult to sustain in current era and future era. Now, the biggest threat which is emerging is advanced persistent threat. This is uh, the uh, area which is uh, emerging, uh, not emerging, but it is increasing day by day, wherein even nation actors are playing a major role and their intention is to persist on your device. So they will hack your device and persist on that. Whether it is your laptop or smartphone, desktop or any gadget sort, sort, sort of things. And they will not show any, any sign that it is hacked. They will do everything. Even, even they will use your, your device to propagate to other device. And they will do in such a fashion that whenever you are working at that time they will do it. And they will use only 1% of your resource. So 1% of your network, 1% of CPU, 1% of your memory. So you will never know, even if you are monitoring, you will never know that my machine is being used to infect other machine. And he will not harm that machine also. So he will try to take a control on large number of machines. And when he will use? He will use for a terrorist attack or he will use during the cyber war. The future war, most of the future wars are going to be a cyber war. Physical wars will be very less in that part. So, for sustainability of the nation, it is important that one and all devices and all accounts and everything should be protected. So, for that I suggest the three parts. Number one, I uh, request government to really regulate the usage of devices and services because both of them are more dangerous than even a machine gun. Because this can be used to kill a person or it can be used to kill a mass or it can be destroy a community. It, it, it is a very dangerous part. So, And, and now we know that uh, even uh, kids are using that. So uh, hacking that particular device is not difficult. Even uh, even Sabjiwala is, uh, is using that device, correct? So hacking this sort of things is not so difficult uh, part sort of thing. So regulation is uh, indeed a necessary things. NGO should put large scale efforts in awareness programs 
and last but not least individuals to have a disciplined behavior on the internet for disciplined behavior number 1 you should reduce the usage optimize your usage i will not use the word reduce reduce is not proper optimize your usage number of devices usage also then uh, recycling the devices also should be proper delete all your unwanted applications unwanted accounts anything whatever is unwanted you delete it don't use anything free every nothing is free in this world you are paying for that then use the strong password biometric is not strong pass- password so i will share one nice uh, password design which normally i tell everybody to do like my password is of the order of 20 characters and you are quite aware that 20 characters it is difficult to remember 20 characters characters and 20 characters are different for whatsapp different for facebook different for instagram different for email different for each bank account different for laptop different from mobile so that way there are 15 20 passwords so and i enter them so last minute i i enter them how do i do for example say the number 5 is my uh, favorite number number 7 is my favorite number and my name is harish so first i will make a h on keyboard h cons- contains seven characters then i will use the symbol on number 7 then i will use numbers 7865432 then i'll use fb for facebook wa for whatsapp in for instagram ln for link linkedin bui for bank of india sbi for sbi and i use my account as well as my wife account and every, my daughter account so last one is my either harish or my wife name or my daughter name this you really see it will come out more than even 10 20 characters also and that i daily use it and you can make your own pattern you have to remember what way you have designed once you know how you have designed you can use it okay now in conclusion i see ai is a big innovation as well as big threat also this is being a, uh, a very auspicious uh, uh, institute where uh, we normally think about the various uh, uh, forms of our uh, god ram avatar krishna avatar and i feel that next avatar will be a kalki avatar which is called a, expected to be kalki avatar and kalki avatar is likely to be a robot because it the robot will be knowing everything and he will have a all knowledge all capability of all the brains what we have because in uh, yesterday morning somebody has put it that uh, ai ha- has a capability 99% and we have capability only 1% and it is true that will increase multifold thank you very much thank you sir thank you sir and you touched upon the right thing for uh, this particular era since we have heard two most important thoughts that data is the currency for this 21st century and similarly data would be used as the most important weapon as sir said for the cyber war in this 21st century so sir highlighted how to make smart use of our smartphone and let us see that the phone does not use us thank you sir so coming to the end of the session i would like to thank all the panelists for sharing such insightful uh, concerns like uh, environmental sustainability and related innovations living wages and cyber security related concerns so we'll have a quick one or two questions from the audience so we are open for questions anyone yeah yes please
so my question to all panels are since yesterday we were uh, learning that uh, for today's generation soft skill and technical skill is very necessary because yesterday gohil sir also said that we are having degrees but we are not having that skills which companies wanted so my question is that do we need to learn soft skill and technical skill or do we need to learn the ai skill because that is becoming very important the students or the persons who are not having the ai or technical knowledge are also remain uh, getting backward in that uh, taking the job or corporate field so which is more necessary ai technical skills is more necessary or classical technical skills is more necessary so a very good question <clears throat> nowadays we are uh, i have uh, discussed uh, uh, already integrative learning the market oriented market demand if you look at the potential demand where it is for example i am telling nowadays this crap carbon trading and uh, so many people are doing lot of calculations about uh, alternative energy how you can uh, reduce uh, carbon emissions so this kind of uh, there are lot of uh, short courses also available and now companies have a lot of demand about all this but there is no people in the uh, general university level people they have no knowledge lack of skills like you have told ai uh, artificial intelligence uh, there are lot of uh, potential uses of artificial intelligence not only current there will be potential uses looking at the market demand you should do some courses that will be, you will be relevant uh, in future also that is my in short what i can. i would like to answer questions slightly in different way similar question uh, were there in many people's mind including mine the answer is rather than learning soft skill or a or b or c you should learn how to learn fast and you should learn how to unlearn fast these two things you need to do if you do these two things rest of the things are very very easy in that part and these sort of things are also taught in iim ahmedabad at least i know very well because in iim ahmedabad i was told by one of the professor who was my mentor he told that every day we ask student to read one book after the college is over they have to read complete book and next day there will be a discussion on that book so reading a 400 page book normally a student takes one semester while it is taught in i am in just one day because they are taught that you read this book just like a novel your brain will understand everything so try to learn the method how to learn and how to unlearn these two things are very important thank you so much sir yeah. if i can add a bit from my side yeah <laughs> yeah sure, thank you in my view uh, skills attitude knowledge all the things put together one will have to careful of five different areas in future one is about the it skills let us divide them into two parts one which is necessary for everyone and the other one which is necessary only for the it professionals the people who want to build their career in that but others also people like me who have nothing to do with it career but we escape from knowing the whether it is cloud computing or whether it is cyber security at least basics we have to know all so this is about the it skills then we have to learn the domain skills domain skills for the it professional are not different because they will anyway learn these things only in deeper but if we are not going into the it skills the side uh, it career side then we have to learn the skills for that domain also now come to the soft skills which are very generic whether it is communication skills or any other skill related to that team building and you know all these things what we say these skills are also very very important in future perhaps more important than what they are today and the i think the most important thing is the the attitude part the behavioral skills 
Uh, yesterday we were talking something about uh, ethics, integrity, taking responsibility, respecting law, respecting others in the society, love for your work, attitude of gratitude. So these things will have no escape. And until now, I have not included the skills which World Economic Forum has published, and they publish every year, saying that going forward, you will need to learn certain skills which computer will never be able to learn. And that is emotional skills, what we call as an EQ, emotional quotient, the, uh, the decision making, the leadership skills of various types, those hopefully computers will never be able to learn. Only humans can do it. So when our job changes in future, when our current job so-called become obsolete, we will have to rely on these. And I think uh, already the other uh, panelists said very, very uh, clearly that we have to now get in the mode of life learning. We have to learn to unlearn and unlearn to learn both. And we, uh, we have to keep learning for the life because uh, at your age at this time, if you think like in my time about 40 years before, I thought whatever I have learned in college or skills that I have learned will be enough for my life till retirement. Most of that happened, fortunately. Uh, perhaps the people of your generation will not be that fortunate and you will not be able to, uh, uh, to learn you. enough Thank you, sir. Which goes yeah. in for the uh, for till your life. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Okay, concluding this session, I would write, like to request Dr. Ashish Kotari, sir, to please present a memento to our esteemed guest. First, we have Ms. Sara Bazar. Harish Matsa. that we conclude this session. So we'll move to the next session. I would request all the guests to please be off. Nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. So this session will be of 15 minutes. So uh, after that, we'll move to the next. OK. Uh, thank you, sir. And uh, looking to the time, I uh, would directly uh, come into uh, this session. Uh, this session is a chat session. And uh, uh, based on the topic, uh, title of the topic, I uh, and, and based on the profile that uh, we have received from uh, the experts, uh, we have. Uh, uh, two questions for uh, Anastasia, Madam. If you can address those two questions and. Uh, in
so there are two questions first is what business opportunities you uh, find and you see for the social entrepreneurs uh, in the area of sustainability and second uh, if you have any example that you can share uh, uh, from europe or from any other that you have seen from this uh, this sustainability area if you can share your thoughts on this generations a more uh, friendly planet because now uh, things are not going so uh, well this is why uh, we try to gather and uh, to exchange knowledge and to be able to act this is the challenge now not to uh, um, be aware of the pattern all the negative patterns that have created these uh, issues that we are now facing and how technology also has uh, helped us in many ways uh, also how it can be uh, considered as a threat uh, we know that uh, I, I, I would like to mention one um, uh, ancient chinese uh, saying here that uh, it's very adequate the the wrong tool, the, the right tools in the wrong hands uh, work in a wrong way. So uh, we, I, uh, I did uh, uh, listen very carefully to what Dr. Harish said earlier with regards to artificial, artificial intelligence. It is just a tool as well and how we use it uh, means a lot. It can be used to ease our daily life, it can be used to create issues, uh, cyber attacks and all this. Uh, I'd like to mention also uh, with regards to this data breach, uh, as we all know, um, there have been uh, in the past, also in the very recent past, uh, scandals with social platforms like Facebook, Cambridge Analytica, uh, how uh, uh, one company can manipulate the decision making uh, of uh, every human, uh, 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 every personality, because this is what personality is. Persona from the Latin word means a mask that we are doing. This is us, who is us? This is also with regards to the yogi tradition, who is us? Who is us? We are, uh, uh, we have accumulated knowledge, how we use this knowledge and how we direction. So one other aspect is with regards to this, the education, as we well uh, mentioned, how this uh, uh, connects the dots and provides a sustainable direction uh, towards being aware, being aware of your patterns so that you can see what is working, what is not to fix it in a timely manner. Now, uh, having said that, I would like to uh, give one example uh, how one can do it. 
there are many examples because obviously there are all these facets um, and we are all part of one. It is like a common knowledge that uh, we all know very well uh, in art, in science, in education. We all know the models that the previous generations left to us, previous, uh, previous personalities, like Newton very well said, uh, I would have done nothing if I, uh, if I couldn't stand in the shoulders of others. Uh, with regards to this, we have already best practices. I would like to mention just one. Uh, it is a company based in Denmark that uh, uh, connects technology with an application. Uh, it's called Too Good To Go. Uh, and uh, what it does actually is uh, to, pr to, to, to connect different bakeries, uh, restaurants and cafes um, all together to this app so the users can uh, find products that are, as the title says, too good to go. These products, uh, they can purchase in a very um, friendly price, much cheaper than they actually uh, worth. So this is actually something that is um, uh, contributing to um, uh, uh, waste management because this is a second chance to these uh, uh, products to be used by the consumers uh, who also face these difficulties now with inflation and uh, all these um, uh, uh, other uh, issues that we need to uh, uh, cope with. So this uh, uh, is just an example how uh, one company can contribute to sustainability in this uh, indirect way, because there are many ways, uh, because there are many facets in sustainability, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, one cannot, uh, can, doesn't need to reinvent the wheel and uh, uh, invent some biodegradable uh, packaging techniques, not necessarily. One can contribute by just giving a second chance uh, and finding uh, either contributing to the idea and funding such companies or just using such uh, uh, ideas by just using these applications like this. Too good to go. It's uh, going really well. It's so uh, successful that is also um, expanding in other European cities. And there are many like this. I'm just giving an example. Um, and uh, this is exactly what I meant, that uh, it's not to be discouraged and thinking, oh, oh, I didn't have this, uh, I, I'm not too smart to have that uh, contribution there, either by doing this startup or by contributing with this research or working for this amazing company who is so great in CSR. Doesn't uh, necessarily need to be that. We can contribute by um, reducing our uh, uh, negative footprint uh, to the environment uh, and by using uh, uh, sustainable products like that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam, for uh, the response. Uh, Dr. Anastasia uh, is a sustainable researcher and lecturer uh, at Germany and UK. Uh, she is a graduate of uh, Athens University, and the specialization of her is in uh, the area of management. The next speaker we have is Dr. Vartika. Uh, she is a PhD in Human Resource Management and she has uh, more than 16 years of experience uh, in teaching and research as well as training. And uh, she has many credentials uh, in her name. Uh, uh, there are many, so I am not listing it right now because of considering the amount of time. I directly come to uh, uh, ask two questions for you also, ma'am, uh, based on what is your area of expertise. The first question that I have for you is uh, business schools that you work, I mean uh, all the business schools uh, focus more on commercial enterprises. Uh, as per your opinion, how business schools and university can promote social enterprise, uh, specifically taking care of sustainability? Thank you, sir. Uh, good evening to all of you, the dignitaries of the dais. 
And uh, so I've been listening uh, to the uh, people and to the uh, panelists from yesterday. But uh, in the morning, I had uh, this first plenary session, and it took a very mixed review and views, you know, of about what sustain sustainability is all about, or what coexistence is all about. So I'll just, because when you say that you are the last to speak, so I'll just review of all the things and B-schools. Yes, uh, as a part of a B-schools, I have... Uh, I'm a proud B school faculty and yes, it's commercial. I'll not deny in that, that we are commercial units, but then we have a responsibility and we have seen it uh, from the past. Uh, not only these days, uh, because I'm a, a Pilani pass out, that we have BIMTECH campus where we had girls schools. And I see always we used to have those cycles in the campus, we do not have uh, carbon emulsion there. So like I passed out in 99 there also, but the term sustainable was not there actually, that existence was not there. But now, you see now in Delhi in, uh, on 20th of November, it was news that IIT Kanpur has developed artificial rain for us, the Delhiites. What was that artificial rain? That artificial rain that IIT Delhi has developed a seed cloud where we will have rain. It will look like rain. We never ever, uh, if I wouldn't have read the newspaper, I would not have known that it is artificial rain because of depleting resources. I, as a faculty of a B school, what are we doing for sustainable thing? Uh, because in the, I'll just uh, say that Professor Anger, if I'm missing a name, he talked about uh, the profit with charity, coexistence, collaboration, and back to society, one more professor said. So as an uh, individual in a B school, generally, uh, how do we do it, you know? So I'll take out some facts. We have that summer internship and dissertation reports with the students, what they give us. So we recycle those reports. We say do not waste paper. But the point is we do not want to bring paper in the institute. So we are doing two. We are cost saving, reusing that reports and recycling for our own use. Right. Second thing, we have uh, solar panels at IBI, and we have uh, usage of the electricity from the solar panels, so sustainable thing. Now when we talk about sustain, like some student asks that is AI, we have to take care of the AI things or we have to take care of the technical skills. Uh, AI is just a facilitator, it's just an enabler. Okay. Soft skills are very much required because I take care of the placements in the B school. I can say and what I've witnessed, you know, that they will not uh, ask you in the interviews about AI. Yes, the jobs are changing. If you talk about HR students, the first step job of recruitment has changed because it's been taken by the AI. That doesn't mean that HR doesn't exist. It exists. It's just the facilitator the young generation has to understand. And the B school faculty, uh, you talk about XLRI, you talk, like the professor talked about, I am Lucknow, he is teaching sustainable course, but implementation of those sustainable policies, those sustainable uh, driven things has to be there, you know, it has to be imbibed to the students uh, everywhere. So when we talked about our culture, we talked about our ethos. So the B schools has to be taught about that ethos, but that uh, uh, Radha ma'am also talked about, you know, transferring or that collaboration with the cooperate with the B schools. So when we have this collaboration, the institute, uh, I as an I business institute when I come from, we have this partnership and uh, uh, from different corporate houses where they come to us, they have that syllabus uh, mentoring with us, what to teach to the students, how to teach to the students. So those sustainable, for me as a faculty or a B school faculty, sustaining my students in the job is very important. First of all, that is very important. To tell them about what you have to do after two years, it's sustainable for me. You know, the education, what I am teaching them has to be sustained. Like he said, we have so many things we are spend, investing or spending so much amount on the uh, audiovisual things and so. But that could have been taught like lemon example he gave. So we are teaching, you know, there was one FDP, the faculty taught, the, he said that we are uh, wasting so much amount of uh, money, our resources, our human capital, our financial capital in unnecessary things which are not actually required. For a management student, they would not ask you, you know, coding, you know, decoding. For a tier two institutes, if I am talking about, they never ask you in the interviews like this. 
So the sustainable on both the ways, like how the faculty is doing, what are we the sources we imbibing in the institute, and making the students implement those sources on both the ways, like soft skills and technical skills. I think. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, from means what you what you shared, I I I has one uh, recommendation or maybe one uh, question for all of us. That Madam said that we started working, means every one of us has started working, installing solar panels uh, in, in giga, watt plants and all, right, using energy. Now, the question after 20 years would be, what about those solar panels? Correct. What we are installing. So, uh, this is what. Uh, uh, only second question, if you can give an example sure, of sure. Uh, this kind. Uh, uh, from the students of Indian social uh, business, if you can share one example. So, I short think, so, uh, like our, my faculty colleague and the seniors who are sitting here, you know, uh, we have talked about the change. Same changes are there and we have to be relearning and unlearning. So, and, co and COVID taught us a lot about this, you know. Uh, I, as a faculty or the people who are sitting here, we never use so many Zoom and so much Google Meets, you know, all these things and we learn that. So, solar, pa solar panel, it's not just that uh, we are using right now. If you talk about five years before, six years before, they were there. But the point is now, uh, the term, again I said, you know, the it's more propagandized, you can say. It's more marketed now. All the things were actually we uh, was there. It's just more propagated. And we have to make the young generation more aware about it. This is the only thing. OK. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much to all the panelists. So concluding this session, uh, I would request Dr. Ashish Kutari, sir, to please present a memento to Dr. Vartika Chaturvedi, ma'am. We have Dr. Anastasia Kitsi, ma'am. I would request uh, Dr. Shiv Kumar Tripathi, sir, to please present a memento to Dr. Ashish Kotari. I request all the panelists to be on the dais for a quick photograph session. Sir, please. Please. All the panelists to be on dais for photographs. a favorite supporter of Humanistic Management Austria chapter from Innsbruck, Tyrol, Austria. He is an advocate for reducing inequalities worldwide with a deep understanding of income inequality and dedicated commitment to addressing social injustices. Robin's passion is to create a more equitable future and has played a pivotal role in shaping our mission to promote fair wages and living wages practices through the equal pay rating scheme. Robin, over to you. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for having me. I'm very honored to be here. My business solution, oh, um, can you put it down? Okay, let's wait a second. Yeah. <clears throat> 
So it's a little bit hard to see, but I hope you can read it. My business solution regarding sustainability is the equal pay rating. The basic idea behind it is that employees receive a fair wage for what they do because they are a substantial part of the company's success. Oh. Why do we need the equal pay rating? One of the main challenges of humanity is the distribution problem. We can see this problem on a global scale, where there are inequalities between countries and a lack of perspective in the global south in international research and development. We can also find it on a domestic scale, where in most countries there is a huge gap between the rich and the poor. And finally, on an internal level, within companies where profits are oftentimes disproportionately distributed, so this wealth gap can lead to decreased opportunities for the less fortunate, which can also have adverse health effects and lead to less participation in the market. <clears throat> Unequal pay can have adverse effects on uh, so uh, society, companies and individuals. For society, there's a growing socio-economic gap that leads to a less stable community and reduced overall spending and demand. For the company itself, unequal pay can lead to reduced employee morale, reduced productivity and dysfunctional corporate culture. On an individual level, unequal pay can lead to increased physical and mental health risks and increased stress and therefore reduced well-being. This means that there is a great need for regulatory and corporate change to establish fair and equal wage distributions. We need to incentivize a shift in the corporate mindset that views employees as valuable contributors to the success of the company instead of mere resources. This also includes the incorporation of CSR practices and, fun and as a fundamental part of business models. This is where my business solution, the equal pay rating, comes in. The EPR is thought to be a rating scheme to evaluate the equality of wage distributions. The equal pay rating consists of multiple indica indicators. For example, the introduction of living wage policies that guarantee employees a fair wage that enables them to live a decent life. Equitable profit sharing where employees can benefit from the success of the company and an executive to average employee pay ratio. The equal pay rating is thought to be a dynamic scheme that allows for a periodic reassessment to mirror the actual situation. The rated company can then use the equal pay rating for marketing purposes on websites and product packaging. For society, equal pay can have a positive effect on sustainable development goals and the economy as a whole, since more individuals have the ability to participate in economic activities. For a company, equal pay can lead to enhanced economic success as it increases employee morale and productivity. Since more consumers worldwide are incorporating ethical considerations into their purchasing decision, many consumers are even willing to pay higher prices for sustainable goods. For an individual, equal pay has the potential to increase mental health, as well as happiness and thereby well-being. I'm sorry. Sorry for that. Uh, how will the evaluation process of the equal pay rating work? 
It is a comprehensive rating scheme that incorporates efficient data collection, leveraging existing reports and utilizing public existing data with a focus on key indicators. To start the data collection, it is planned to create a platform where employees can share their wage and their perception of a living wage. The evaluation process enables simplified company participation by including automated data analysis via artificial intelligence. To sum it up, fair wage practices are important for the promotion of economic stability. So societal well-being and individual prosperity can help in creating a more sustainable and equitable future. In this context, the equal pay rating is a corporate reform to address income inequality. It's an innovative rating scheme and a market-driven mechanism as an incentive for com companies to adapt fair wage and living wage policies. It incorporates the appreciation of employees as valuable contributors to success. Companies can use the EPR for marketing purposes to distance themselves from competitors and to attract ethical consumers. The collected data can be used to attract companies that are offered a comprehensive analysis of their wage distribution and CSR practices. As a result, we provide the companies with a rating certificate to be prominently displayed on their sales channels. Thank you for your attention. So if we have any questions from audience. Okay. In that okay. Case, I will move. Thank you so much, Robin. Thank you. Yeah. So welcoming our second participant, Mr. Krunal Dholia. He's a founder at Kalva Nanotech in India and a co-founder and chief scientist at Framtex Holding AB in Sweden. Biotechnologist come entrepreneur with 14 years of research experience, he is committed to develop an innovative edible food coating named as Biopeel, revolutionizing post-harvest food pr preservations. He has received recognition including awards from Honorable Gujarat Chief Minister and a vibrant Gujarat Startup Summit. I welcome Krunal Dholia. Hello everyone, and thank you so much for introducing me. So, this is uh, one product. Is uh, since last two days you are hearing a lot of a lot of thing about uh, sustainability. It is also a solution for the the small problem which we are going to face, and we are already facing it. It's like in with increasing our population, the food demand is also increasing, and we are having limited resource of the uh, land. We cannot grow our food on all the lands because we need to conserve forest also. And yeah. So what is the problem actually? We can grow uh, food, but out of this, uh, whatever the food we are growing, almost nearly 15% it is going to the waste. We are not, it is not able to reach to the final consumer. And I'm having this small data, I got it from the internet. That is, the government of India has only released it. In 2016, the whatever the Indian, I uh, mean, the post-harvesting lost was equivalent to the Indian agriculture ka jo budget hota hai. That amount was equivalent to that. And this problem, what is like in this challenge is, it is having a lot of problem, uh, like in a number of problems is behind that. So among this, there is a one big problem is that is microbial contamination. That up if if the, if any uh, fruit is having any fungus that is like in white growth hoga, you will not buy it. It's going to the waste, right? So and this is also it's leading to the spoilage also. It's, nobody is going to eat it. So we have developed this bio pill, which is like an edible coating material. It's going to apply on the fruit. It's completely uh, color neutral neutral in taste and uh, it's non-toxic also. Non-toxic is little bit, uh, still we are uh, doing some uh, uh, research on it, 
but whatever the compound, we have selected the bacteria for it. Bacteria uh, is going to produce uh, polymer for uh, polymer for us. That is clean label polymer. And second, it's a secondary metabolites. We are going to get it from them. That is also a clean labeled one. Here I'm using uh, a secondary metabolites because it is an active coating. I don't want to just preserve it. I want to preserve it from the fungus also. Because the uh, wax, you have seen on Instagram or YouTube, a lot of videos have seen the apple is coated with the wax. That can protect it from the certain action that is like in, uh, releasing of the certain gases and uh, water moisture. But it won't be uh, helping against the uh, fungal attack. A solution can be applied uh, by anything like uh, with spray, by dipping or by brushing. So it is very easy for any, uh, any, any farmer also. So what all values I'm going to add to the fruits? It's like it's going to enhance the texture. Jo appealing hai. If the fu uh, fruit is shining, so we all, it's like an appealing. It is better food for us. So it is going to give that texture also. So improving the, the food uh, quality and safety because it is stopping the contamination from each, uh, from one fruit to another fruit. Reusing the uh, food waste. Then improve the sustainability because uh, the it is, uh, waste is low and uh, whatever the output is coming, it's going maximum to the consumers. And uh, convenience for the growers or traders. So we are having, uh, this model is like, we are going to provide the product itself. This is a powder form. The farmer can use it by himself. And we are also going to uh, develop this machine for them. It's like a small machine, it's like this podium. So it's going to, uh, we are going to give the service also that. And consultation service also, the farmer who is not understanding the, how the technology is working. Done. This is uh, the first, it is like, in, it's not, uh, Ramban, it's like in the, each fruit will be required the different composition. So currently we are working on tomatoes because I, st I found this problem first in the tomato. And it is very perishable fruit and the farmer is not able to uh, treat any kind of treatment to the tomatoes. Because apple, uh, avocado, these are like in uh, costly fruits. So we can uh, afford the co coating such, uh, such fruits. But what about the tomato? Tomatoes need to be, if the rain comes, immediately they have to sell out. Otherwise, it's, everything will be spoiled. So using this uh, coating, this selling window can be increased. Uh, yeah, I'm having the results for that. This is like a uh, rate in, uh, reduction uh, with, the, with the, this is the after 10 days of the result. This is a photograph from the, my laboratory. Uh, left side, it's like in my right side, your left side is like, uh, that is non-coated tomato, uh, tomatoes and right side is uh, it's a coated with a biopil. So I've seen the 82% in the reduction in the infection, that is from the fungus. 90% uh, that is almost double uh, in the freshness. Uh, the freshness I have checked, like in, that is a visible appeal and the, and the contamination was less in that. And the cost was almost like uh, 50 pesa to 1 rupee per kg of tomatoes for the customers. It's like an uh, equivalent to 100 kg from 1 uh, USD dollar. Who is going to be my user? My user will be a grower, the farmers, because we are going to assist them also. Then traders, because they want to, if they want to keep a lot of fruits, and of course this is a food park, the, a lot of fruit is coming to them in turns. So how big is the market? Uh, if, I, if I talk about just tomatoes, India is producing 20 million tons of potatoes every year. And only Gujarat is like 1.3 million uh, tons of to uh, tomatoes in from the Gujarat. So I'm, I'm not uh, taking, this is like a complete entire market. I'm not going to cover because everybody is not going to understand my product. Also. But I can at least get 0.5% uh, also. That is also a big achievement for all of us. And uh, by using this product, we can achieve uh, sustainable development goals uh, 80, uh, 12, that is like in the sustainably uh, use of product. And second is zero hunger. Because if we reduce the wastage, then we can feed a lot of people. Currently, if we, uh, it's a 14% is going into waste. If, uh, using that, uh, that food, we can uh, feed to other people also. So these are currently, um, uh, we are two people. Uh, she's my wife, me and my wife, both are biotechnologists. We are working on it. 
and this project is uh, funded by GSBTM and Saudi Technology and Business Incubator. And uh, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, this is my contact detail if anybody wants to. And yeah, actually, I'm looking for a team also if anybody is interested to work because I'm very weak in marketing. Sir, to hai kaha sir? Is it biodegradable? Yeah, it is biodegradable. It's a completely, that is why a clean label compound. We can eat it. Nothing is going to happen because a lot of uh, polymer is already used in Maggi also. You tested one before tomatoes. Yeah, currently we are working on tomatoes because we identified with the tomatoes. Uh, soon we will be uh, working on uh, avocado also and strawberry because strawberry is highly perishable. So have you completed the formulation? Yeah, for tomatoes I have already completed, just uh, that is in final state, that is for the toxicity, uh, still it is a, a clean label, but still we are going for the toxicity analysis. Because it is going to be the consumed uh, by the human, that's why. Yes, ma'am? Uh, this is not a patentable because it's, an, it's going to be the formulation first. But the machine, what we are going to develop, that is we are going to get to the, this uh, design patent. Yeah. Yes. Yes, ethylene. Yeah, so they don't taste the same. But, you know, from outside they look right, but inside you know they will be and they get rotten. Yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, in that case, it's what happened. Uh, they are they are using certain kind of the gases. That is one is the ethylene. So whenever this, it's a aging hormone for uh, plants. Yeah, this is similar. That is also increasing the ethylene only. Means it's a aging hormones ko increase karte. The the plant is like this. So, fruit. So, whenever it is exposed to the environment, the uh, outer skin is damaged. That is getting um, older, faster. And once that is the only protection layer for any fruit, that is gone, means it is going to be, uh, means the spoilage will be quicker for plant. And taste kyun nahi aata, kyunki twist easily nahi aata, that is, uh, on plant it is slower, process is very slow. But here we are just giving the artificial uh, fresher to them. It grows fast. So uh, there won't be any effect directly. Uh, indirectly, it is like in because, as you mentioned, that is like in uh, calcium carbide. If that is going to create any problem, that is the problem. Otherwise, it's not any any problem. So how many products unique? Yeah, my product is unique. It's like okay. Uh, so we can take those questions off. Oh, yeah. yeah, we are running short of time. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you. So moving to the third and last participant of the evening, Dr. Tulsi Shiani, who holds a PhD in nanoscience focusing on hybrid nanostructure for, sol for solar energy conversion applications from Central University of Gujarat and physicist from Saurashtra University. Dr. Shiani brings extensive experience in research and development and teaching from prestigious institute like, like IGCAR, IIT Kanpur and PDPU with a passion for developing technologies, products and systems for greener planet. Galaxy Eco Energy Private Limited is a recognized startup in renewable energy by DPIT incubated at EUA Center, Atmi University, supported by BIREC, which focuses on green hydrogen for sustainability clean energy applications. Thank you, Aditya and uh, organizing committee. So I'm Dr. Tul Sisyani, already given the information about me. So I will not go in detail. So my title is a green hydrogen for sustainable clean energy applications. So why I have chosen this problem, I'll uh, explain it. And uh, this belongs to uh, SDG goals, uh, seven affordable and clean energy, eight uh, decent work and growth, nine industry innovation and infrastructure, uh, 11 sustainable cities and uh, communities and 13 is the climate actions. So, okay. So we have the problem. I have the, I had the problem 
this is uh, not my problem this is your problem also this is our problems so during my college studies like uh, my fuel expenses was the double than the education expenses that was my problem so i focused to solve that problem and uh, i'm still finding the solutions to affordable clean and affordable fuel and affordable clean energy so like today we have the uh, eco friendly energy problem affordable fuel uh, right now, like today, non-RE is uh, most used than the RE, like uh, renewable energy is less used than the non-renewable renewable energy. We have the problem, global warming and climate change, pollutions due to the usage of fossil fuels, like air pollution, water pollution, land pollution. And the, today, like uh, energy consumption is growing more than the energy production. So we have these problems. So like uh, WHO has uh, published one report, like uh, annually 7 million deaths are due to air pollution, like uh, health issues are there due to the air pollution, lung cancer, heart diseases and strokes are there. So we can solve these problems if we, no we will not solve, like Saras told us, various avatars are coming in on earth. So God will come as a uh, human form to solve these problems. So if God wants to sol solve these problems, he has to come as a human. Like humans are the responsible for these problems and human will be the responsible to solve these problems. So solution is to develop an eco-friendly energy conversion technology. So I have proposed one solution to generate green hydrogen using solar energy itself. So it is a, it will not use any independent like uh, grid electricity. So it is an independent uh, energy uh, green hydrogen generation. So using a bio-photoelectrochemical water splitting, so I already have demonstrated uh, this POC at a TRL 5 level. So I'm still uh, um, making it to a higher TRL for commercialization. So uh, this is my product. It is already, uh, validation is completed and uh, it is generated uh, with high purity green hydrogen. So already in uh, collaboration with uh, various industries to make it a more uh, commercial level product. So what are the applications of green hydrogen? So green hydrogen generation can be like this product can be installed for portable at various uh, large uh, mega scale applications also. So green hydrogen for mobility in air mobility, road mobility, rail mobility and uh, sea mobility also. So this can be applicable for, for uh, various applications. In the uh, portable electric hydrogen fuel cell based charging stations can be developed for uh, EV vehicles and the uh, HFC based electricity generator can be made for uh, like houses, societies, like our university offices and for institution and uh, industries also for their electricity as well as fuel uh, purpose. So in future like uh, in hydrogen generator uh, is a hydrogen stove, hydrogen bike, hydrogen car, hydrogen uh, plane and H2FC like uh, charging stations can be installed at various uh, remote as well as in urban areas. So main USPs, we are not using any grid electricity, we are using uh, sunlight which is uh, available naturally. So that is our main USP and it is uh, fully independent uh, with uh, any grid electricity. So if you see like market, so today like hydrogen is already in the, in the like uh, available, it has a huge market, like, to, like it was uh, about 800 billion dollar in 2023. Today mainly hydrogen is being used in the industrial applications, but today in mobility it is not there. If we use as a mobility then itself like uh, EV market is there, 6.4 billion dollar for the charging infrastructure. So we can use hydrogen as a charging infrastructure also. And it is uh, uh, increasing uh, about 18.5 percent annually, like this uh, facilities, this uh, economy or uh, this ecosystem. And uh, if you see competitor, like today in grey hydrogen, uh, in national and international, in today like uh, Reliance is al already producing grey hydrogen. In private, in PSUs, IOCL, ONGC, GAL and NTP NTPC are there. In international, EMEA, Siemens, BP, uh, various industries are there. In electrolyzer, like uh, government is, um, has made uh, green hydrogen policy also, green hydrogen mission. 
So in that electrolyzer technology is there. So in this, uh, in uh, national level, like various uh, Indian industries are uh, collaborating with uh, foreign industries to establish the units here. In that Omium, Avada, Greenwich is there. And uh, Reliance is also planning to install uh, one unit in their uh, refineries also. In the international block power, Linde, Nail Hydrogen, and Neom Green Hydrogen are there in the uh, electrolyzer technology. In the photoelectrochemical water splitting and photocatalytic uh, photo water splitting. So these both technology are at uh, unend scale at national and international level. So there is no competition like computer available in this uh, PEC and photocatalytic reactors. And uh, I'm, I have made one business model, like uh, still I'm designing that model. So I'm, uh, I'm making a direct selling business model. So it is an like MLM type business model. So I will not uh, create a franchise based model. I will, uh, I will make revenue for myself also, and I will make revenue for users also. Like today B2C, B2B, and B2G is there, are there. So in, in both uh, hydrogen users are there, and hydrogen suppliers are there. So in hydrogen users, in the B2B like steel, chemical, refinery and various industries are there. In supply, they can supply the cylinders to their customers. In the B2C like customer, as a customer, so we can use hydrogen for ourselves in our house or uh, like temple organization institutes, they can install for their uh, purpose and though they, they can be the be a customer end user. So they also can generate revenue like in uh, MLM mode. In B2G, like hydrogen already used by PSUs, and uh, they can supply to their customers also, like uh, IOCL, HP gas, all have their uh, fuel stations also there. So I, I'm, I will, I have designed and I'm still making that model, MLM model. So distribute, I will create a uh, distributed channel network model. And uh, this idea already supported by BIREC with a grant up to five lakh and fifty thousand as a uh, postdoctor fellowship. And uh, this startup is uh, recognized by DPIT in the renewable energy sector. And already we have filed an Indian provisional patent. And the uh, idea was uh, presented at Global Bio India 2023. And uh, I was uh, certified as an entrepreneur in uh, green hydrogen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure there will be questions, so we can take those offline. Uh, as we are running short of time, so I'll just conclude this session. As we draw to a close, let us reflect on the accomplishments and company we have experienced. While this gathering may be only the beginning, it marks a significant milestone in our journey towards a more sustainable future for business and communication worldwide. The success of this event serves as a testament to a power of collaboration, creativity, and collective action, inspired by our shared commitment to making a difference. Let us vow to continue our efforts, knowing that together we can create lasting changes for generations to come. Thank you for joining us on the remarkable journey. Together, let us pave the way towards a more sustainable and prosperous future for all. I would like to give a special thanks to our Vice Chancellor Sir, Dr. Shiv K. Tripathi Sir, for conceptualizing this segment. And also, I would like to thank Atmiya Management and the team for making this segment possible. Thank you so much. I would request everyone to move to the Step Auditorium for Validatory Ceremony. Thank you so much.